Hi everyone, today, we will be discussing the steps to apply contract law to the common law case and the element of the offer. As you may already know, a contract is a legally binding agreement between two or more parties that creates an obligation to do or not to do a particular thing. To apply contract law to a common law case, we need to follow a set of steps that help us determine if a contract has been formed or not. The first step is to identify the parties involved in the case and their roles in the contract. This includes the offerer, the offeree, and any other parties who may be involved in the contract. Next, we need to determine if there was an offer made by one party to another. An offer is a clear and definite statement of terms that indicates the intent to enter into a contract. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, the company made an offer to pay a reward to anyone who contracted influenza after using their product. After identifying the offer, we need to analyze it to determine if it was definitely enough to be legally binding. The offer must include essential terms such as price, quantity, and delivery. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, the offer was specific enough to be considered legally binding. We then need to determine if the offer was communicated to the offeree. The offer must be communicated directly or indirectly to the offeree or a specific group of individuals. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, the offer was communicated through advertisements in newspapers and on posters. Next, we need to assess the offeree's response to the offer. An acceptance of the offer must be unambiguous and mirror the terms of the offer. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, the offeree accepted the offer by using the product and contracting influenza. We also need to consider any counteroffers made by the offeree. A counteroffer is the rejection of the original offer in the making of a new offer. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, there were no counteroffers made. We then need to analyze any revocation of the offer by the offerer. An offer can be revoked before it is accepted, but the revocation must be communicated to the offeree. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, there was no revocation of the offer. We also need to determine if the offer was terminated by operation of law. An offer can be terminated by the lapse of time, death of a party, or destruction of the subject matter. In the case of Smoke Carbolic v. Carlil, none of these situations applied. Finally, we need to consider any issues related to the capacity of the parties to enter into a contract and evaluate any defenses to the formation of the contract, such as duress, fraud, or undue influence. That concludes our discussion on the steps to apply contract law to the common law case and the element of the offer. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for your attention.